I spend a lot of my day in Visual Studio, but I spend even more of it now in Visual Studio Code. There's a lot of fantastic plugins for Visual Studio Code that make my workflow much easier and cooler. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. This is going to be kind of a special one. Uh, I'm going to do an episode here on some of the cool plugins that I use in Visual Studio Code, and then Dave's going to do an episode after this on some of the cool plugins that he uses in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so I have a bunch of copies of Visual Studio Code open over here, um, and I will start off with my latest discovery called Peacock. Uh, and Peacock allows you to change kind of the, the background colors of your Visual Studio based on what project you have open. So I tend to have like, I don't know, sometimes I'm working on like four different projects and each one of those is a couple of different Visual Studio code windows open. Uh, so this is a really quick way for me to be able to find it. Even when I'm alt tabbing through, I can find like, oh, this one's the, the kind of light blue one. This is the, the default colored one. Uh, this one is the red one, which means something to me. Uh, and so you can you can fine tune this and set this up with any color that you want. Uh, so it just runs from the kind of command palette here. So you can change your favorite color. You can enter a color if you want. So I'm gonna try entering a color here. I don't I don't know any color codes. Uh, just try that. That looks like a color code to me. Uh, and then it's gonna go and change the the color of the kind of surround to be a little bit more recognizable. Um, so it doesn't really do much other than that, but it is super useful to to have that. Yeah, this is awesome. This uh, this is an extension I didn't know I needed, but it solves like a real problem that I had. It's very cool. Yeah, I, I don't know where I heard about it. I feel like maybe from Ted Newitt, um, somewhere on Twitter. Okay, so next one is Terraform. So I run a bunch of Terraform templates for spinning up environments in the cloud, either on AWS or on Azure. Uh, never on GCP so far, but it's because nobody will hire me to do GCP projects yet. You should. Um, so this Terraform plugin is really handy. It provides like autocomplete stuff uh, and allows you to reference other sections inside of the file. Uh, so if you are looking to, to do like uh, figure out the list of variables, it gives you this nice little autocomplete list here that you can go in and, and choose what it was that you wanted. And it'll also be good enough to reference back to like um, other resources you've defined in the file here. So like this is looking at the SQL service here and it gives me the, the obvious completion on that. And then I can click into this uh, and it doesn't, it's not fully complete yet, but it just gives me a good idea of like all the stuff that's out there that I can, I can put in for it. And it does this cool thing where it highlights sections in the file here. So all of the, the providers here, uh, it highlights them so you can kind of click on them and open a link out to the, the documentation directly for that, which is good because I'm always trying to remember the documentation for that. And having that available to me right away is pretty handy. Um, let's see what I was going to show you here. Right in this file here, um, uh, maybe this is the best one to demo this on. Let me switch back to a different window for this one. Uh, okay, so this is a good one here. So this is a plugin called Git Lens, and this kind of brings the, the Git Lens stuff that exists in Visual Studio into Visual Studio Code. Uh, so I can see that this on this class here, it was originally created two years ago by me. It's only ever had one author. This is not super exciting, um, but I can click into to this and it'll give me kind of like a, a history of it. I can go back and open up previous versions. Uh, I can take a look at uh, Git Blame directly inside here. So this gives me an idea of kind of like, what the lifestyle, the lifespan of this has been. So this is file was almost completely created two years ago, <clears throat> uh, and it was almost completely created by me. Uh, but had it been created by other people, it would give me a better idea of sort of like who's to, who's the best person to talk to about different sections of the file, and uh, it also gives me the commit comments for it. So it gives me an idea of kind of what the commit comments are on it. So this, I find this really useful because it surfaces, I kind of get information directly in my workflow. Ah, okay, so I have done Peacock, Terraform, GitLens. So I've got two more that I'm gonna talk about. One is partial diff. Uh, so this is just a standard diff engine that exists inside of Visual Studio Code. So I can like right click on a file here and I can say 
select for compare, and then I can compare that with another file here so by clicking on a different one and go, where is the other side of this one, uh, compare with selected. Uh, and obviously these files are like completely different files, so they're super different. Uh, but this lets me just see an inline diff of what's changed between the two files, what the differences is, are. So this is just like the stuff that you could do normally inside of diff if you had a text editor or, or a, a command line, but this brings it into Visual Studio Code, which is pretty nice. And then my last one that I want to talk about is not really a plugin so much as it is a collection of plugins over here. I'm just going to drop to the uh, extensions here. Do I have it installed on this one? Uh, so it doesn't install on this side, but let's let me go back over to here and do extensions. Uh, and then I have a series of extensions which are like remote and then a bunch of different things. So here they are here. Uh, so these allow you to connect to other machines or containers that are running, uh, not, that aren't necessarily running like any sort of a UI or running Visual Studio Code or anything like that. So it makes the changes you make in Visual Studio Code seamless that it will save them back to that other location. Uh, so I use this quite a bit for dev containers. So I set up a container that I'll do my development in on my machine. Uh, and I have a blog post out about this. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll like I'll run the container. I can do my changes there. It immediately saves it into the container. Uh, so all of my page refreshes and everything inside the container work on the newly saved stuff. Uh, and it separates kind of the, the configuration of the application and what you need to have installed on your machine out. So next time some other developer opens the project, all they need to do is just open the project and it'll spin up a Docker container for them and put them into like the same environment that I had. So I don't have to worry about what libraries are installed and that sort of thing. Uh, there's also a version that goes over SSH. So I have this actually connected. So this is actually a, a Docker container that I'm connected to that is running on, on AWS. Uh, and I'm connected into that container as root, of course. Um, and I'm able to kind of explore the file system out there. It gives me a shell so I can do like shell things out there. Uh, and this is basically just like being on that container inside of uh, whatever the elastic container service is on AWS. Uh, so this could be anything, right? This, this could be a virtual machine somewhere that I'm connected into. And any time I make a change to a file and hit save, it just seamlessly goes and saves that out to the remote machine. Okay, so I think that was all of the ones that I wanted to talk about. So any Very questions cool. about those? Oh, it's kind of a whirlwind tour. Um, no, they all look super useful. Um, right now I'm not in on any projects where the, the remote stuff would be useful, but I can definitely think of times in the past where I wish I had that. Well, you'd be surprised. So you can set up like, say you're doing .NET Core development, you can set up a container that contains .NET Core, right. contains your Kestrel and that sort of thing. And then instead of having to worry about, oh, does this other developer have .NET Core 3 and all of that stuff, you just it's say like, here, here is a Docker file, just build the, the image. And in fact, you can even, you can even have um, Visual Studio Code build the image for you. So you can give it a, a Docker compose file and mm -hmm. it'll go and like build the Docker image and then kind of connect into it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to play around with that. Very cool. Yeah, that's great. All right, great. Well, thanks everybody for joining us on this like five minute high speed tour of a bunch of plugins. And we will see everybody on the next episode. So thank you and remember to like, comment, share and build a plugin which inserts the RSS feed of our latest episodes directly into your Visual Studio code. <laughs> Bye. Bye.